What's cracking, everybody? It's RFL Rose here, bringing you some Pokemon Go Badly content. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at a really awesome shoutcast where we've got a trainer from my Discord, Bosch2018, who hit expert on a 10 0 run with this team that is double weak to Bastidon. But don't you worry, trainers, he's got a plan. And in one of these battles, he does beat the Bastidon team. And we're going to check out these games by Bosch2018. Thank you, trainer, for submitting these battles. And congratulations on an early expert run in this season. Let's get into these battles here and check out how Bosch pilots this team on a 10-0 sweep straight up to expert. We start off this game with an Altaria into the Lickitung. Honestly, Altaria is back, dude. Altaria has become an absolute meta force. Going for the Moonblast here because it's going to do more damage than the Sky Attack. Honestly, this is a nice move here. I like this because it's even got a chance for the attack debuff. And he also... Oh my god, dude. He just reaches into the force and catches the move on the Skeleturge. That's a huge play here. Typically, the, uh, the, the, the safe swap on this team is the Shadow for Alligator. I actually tried the team myself, as did many other trainers in my Discord, which you can find uh, in the pinned comment and description. It's a, it's a Patreon sub and a YouTube membership sub, but honestly, I tell you, it's worth it. Um, even though I own it, if I didn't own it, I would be paying to be in it. But anyway, um, great community, great people, great great people all learning to get what better together. It's really just, it's awesome. Anyway, if that, if that kind of thing suits you, you also get early access to my teams and my videos and all that fun stuff too. So uh, there's definitely perks to be had for it. But anyway, the opponent has a Talon Flame. They do swap into the Skeleturge here and get for getting Shield Advantage. Baj is going to be able to take out the opponent's... Um, they can take out the opponent's talent flame after a really aggressive farm down here with the shadow for alligator and even against a uh even against this lickitung they've only got one shield left this uh, this hydro can is going to knock out and i recently obtained a shadow for alligator my own self i've discovered the true power behind shadow for alligator after having used a regular this thing is atrocious and Baj making some really nice counting. You see why this trainer hit expert, expert so early. He's on top of his play in these battles here. Catching a move on this... Oh, no, trainer, no! Oh, they're running Lickitung double incinerate. And this for alligator just says, no, 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 not in my house. You get out of here. Get in the kaboom, baby. Oh, that was gorgeous. I love that. Good game. Oh, dude. For alligator's insane. This thing is so insane. I love it. For Alligator is the best Pokemon in the Great League right now, in my opinion. And hopefully, trainers, you were able to get a Shadow. I know the event just ended. Otherwise, I'd remind you to TM Frustration or go hunt to Shadow Totodile. But Shadow Totodile. Ooh, the Ice Beam. Oh, no, dude. Okay. Anyway, Shadow Totodile did come back into the rocket rotations. You're looking for the female Water Grunt. You can get a choice of either Piplup or... Um, or Totodile in that grunt battle. Hopefully you get more Totodile if you're looking for the uh, for the for Alligator. Uh, let me know in the comments, by the way, if you guys have managed to find yourselves a Great League or Ultra League Shadow for Alligator, or heck, even a Spicy, the Master League for Alligator. Let me know in the comments if you're able to obtain one of those bad boys. Opponent comes in with an Annihilate, but for Alligator in that, dude, that five Shadow Claws to a Hydro Cannon is absolutely nuts. Gonna be able to get a shield from the opponent. Now two to shields to zero, and you've got a skeleton urge, dude. The opponent doesn't have anything here. This could be an ice punch. Did they even build it the shadow ball? No, but they shield the night slash because you guys I guess you gotta shield something, right? Opponent looking to probably make a catch here. Baj over farms. Very nicely done here. It's trying to you know expect the opponent to make that catch. And now they could just Whiskash is gonna come in. Whiskash, buddy, you're about to have a real bad time. Because this 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 Skeleturge is only one incinerate short of the Shadow Ball. And even though you get to those Mud Bombs real quick, Skeleturge with that energy gets to the Shadow Ball even quicker. Goodbye, Whiskash. And that's going to be a good game. Very well played. Getting into the next game here, we're going to have Altaria on the lead versus Basti. <laughs> There's the Basti. He told me it was in here somewhere. And he told me he wins this game. Going to safe swap into the uh, into the uh, Skeleturge here, which makes a lot of sense, right? Typically, when you expect or when you look at a, uh, a Bastidon team, they usually have like Charm or Fighting or Grass in the back, right? So it makes a ton of sense. Now, the way that he plays this out is he safe swaps, lets them throw first, and then starts whipping out the Shadow Balls. Now, the huh? opponent has a Talent. What? Okay. I was not expecting that. Talent Flame in the back. Trainer, what are you gonna do against this against this for alligator that's about to come in and blow you open? Oh Alright. This is for alligator sweep time. Oh, he stays in. He comes back in with the Altaria. Okay, it makes sense. Right? You want to get some use out of the Altaria. A moonblast 
while resisted by the Basti, does still do damage. So he's probably going to look to go for the Sky Attack, not really focusing too much on his timing, just wants to get this thing out of here, uh, which makes a lot of sense, right? So the opponent does not shield. What do they have in the back? Because they're going to come back in with the Basti, and they're going to have to immediately switch because the Basti is not going to want to see the, the... Oh, they come in! They have the Trevenant! If he gets the bait here... No, he could just go straight Hydro Cannon, dude! The fact that Feraligator outpaces and it's resisted Hydro Cannons do om it's gonna it's gonna ko i guarantee you i guarantee you and he's making very good decisions on counting by the way he knows exactly when they're gonna throw the seed bomb how much they need and he knows he can over farm a bit to do that now trevin probably does win cmp here so he has to be careful not to lose cmp hydro cannon does almost 50 percent dude and the opponent quits before the hydro cannon comes through because they know they're gonna take it on the chin good game here now, it would have been very difficult if they ended up having uh, Victory Bell and Wigglytuff in the back. I think that that's still an extraordinarily difficult thing to overcome, um, especially if you have that uh, Skeletor. Once Skeletor is gone, like you have to make magic happen with the rest of your team to deal with even just a Wigglytuff. You could certainly deal with Double Grass if you were able to uh, to get the Skeletor out and keep you know keep the Basti occupied for long enough. But I definitely don't see a very good way to deal with uh, Wigglytuff, which has been very common in the season with so many people running the dragons and trying to deal with the fighters like Annihilate. Opponent just immediately goes for Night Slash. I really don't know. I don't understand this play. Um, I would definitely be no shielding here, especially because they just boosted, unfortunately, for, for Baj here. Um, but I would definitely be no shielding the first Night Slash because if they don't build it to Shadow Ball, they're not going to KO you no matter what. Now, he could shield this one, and I don't think he farms down here, but an extra Incinerate will definitely be nice here um, as he then goes for the Disarming Voice. you have taken that Incinerate. Going to get the energy here that's going to make it easier to get to a move in the next coming matchup as the opponent goes down. I, I always let the first Night Slash through just because um, it, it just it doesn't do it doesn't even do like half of Skeletor's HP. It does about half about going to be able to get to the uh, the opponent's Gligar here with his disarming voice. Unfortunately, wasn't able to get to the Shadow Ball here, but the Aerial Ace doesn't knock out and then they have a Polyrath. Oh, no, dude. The Polyrath is not. Well, I don't actually in the zeros. This actually wouldn't be bad. I think two Hydro Cannons against Shadow Poly. Dude, never mind. Say no more. The opponent... Actually, no. The opponent is probably going to be able to knock out here. This is interesting. Okay, what are we going to do? Opponent goes for the Scald. That does knock out. I bet the Alt Altaria has enough to get... Yeah, the Altaria's got enough. Never mind. Who am I kidding? Altaria's got enough HP to farm this down. Good game. All right, getting into the next battle here. We are going to have Altaria on the lead versus a Vigoroth. This is pretty good, uh, especially because the counters are resisted here from the Vigoroth. However, Rock Slides do come out much quicker than the Altaria can get to any move here. So it's really going to come down to whether or not Baj wants to deal with this in the lead or the back. So Rock Slide is not going to get shielded here. Going to be able to go for the Sky Attack. Oh, Moon Blast trying to catch the opponent off guard here. Hopefully they don't shield their Vigoroth and then... Oh, they don't shield the Vigoroth. That is massive. Does the opponent settle for the Body Slam, or were they at the Rock Slide here? Bosch doesn't care. He's going to let it go. It's a Body Slam. Going to be able to win lead here. Ooh, the Feraligator comes in, but unfortunately, um, in the twos, I do believe that if you let one Aerial Ace go, I, I do believe that Feraligator loses this matchup. However, Bosch can get to this Hydro Cannon here. One shy. I think that might have actually been CMP. I couldn't tell. Um, but being able to save a shield for the Skeletor here. Now he's got shield advantage. Hopefully the Skeletor can sweep. Now he's going to shield one more time because that one Shadow Call that he just got through allowed him to get to the Hydro Cannon. And he's either going to be able to get rid of the Gligar, which would be a pretty fair threat to Skeletor with a shield advantage or down a shield here. Um, so now that the Skeletor has shield advantage, it can come in and deal with the Gligar pretty nicely. It doesn't matter what the Gligar throws. It can definitely handle it. Being able to go for... Uh, the opponent goes for the perfect amount of wing attacks here. Goes for their dig, potentially. And they go for the Aerial Ace bait, which is now going to be awkward for the... Uh, okay, they just make a really... So they try to defer the damage here. They came in. They came in with Trevenant. Traitor! Did you know what happens when you come in with Trevenant? You're going to get roasted, baby. And the catch, the catch on the Altaria making up for that unfortunate play. Now, had I seen Trevenant, I would have gone to max energy and I would have just, I would have thrown the Shadow Ball when I got to max energy and then gone for the Disarming Voice immediately when the Gligar came back in. Because Skeletor does very, very, very convincingly win CMP, but very nicely done here to kind of pick up from that slight error there. Good, good play.
And for all I know, maybe he meant to do it. I don't know. In my eyes, I would. In my eyes, it looked like a misplay, but I could be wrong. So the opponent has a skeleton. All right, well, they don't have a skeleton. They have an annihilate in the lead, and they swap immediately into Lickets on here. Now, this is nice because skeletons for Alligator and Altaria, all of them have an incredible amount of play into annihilate. For Alligator, doing so much damage with those Shadow Claws actually is a really good matchup for it because it also outpaces to those Hydro Cannons. And Skeleturge, double resisting counters and being able to do super effective damage with both of its charge moves means that Baj is most likely just going to play this matchup out here and look to let the Skeleturge come in. He tries to make another astounding catch. Now, he's still going to catch the energy. The opponent's going to throw a move before going down, however. That's, that's going to happen. But he's trying to catch that Body Slam. And man, that would have been something. He did it again. But... Now the opponent's going to come in with a Dugong. This is a very awkward matchup because you have to decide, is the opponent throwing Drill Run or are they going to throw Icy Wind? Now the nice thing here is that this is this is really huge because I can see, I can already see the end game in which the Feraligator just goes in for a farm down here. Now, it is good here that Baj did shield that up because now he can go to put some pressure back on this Dugong. You don't want to let the Skeleturge go quite yet or try to call a move here because you want to get it low enough where this, uh, where this, um, for alligator can really farm down. This is the range where the for alligator can farm down. And he calls an icy wind. What a call! Now the opponent is behind on energy. They they knew they lost. That was it. Good game. The opponent swapping in the for the, the for alligator comes in and immediately outpaces to the uh, to the moon. Now Baj is immediately looking to pivot into the for alligator here. For alligator is very good into these skarmory teams because typically they end up having. Um, something in the back, obviously like a dragon or maybe a, another water type. And I'm so, sort of surprised the opponent hasn't bothered to swap out yet. Perhaps they're pulling a me where they want to pull shield advantage before they swap out, which makes a lot of sense here. Now they come in with the Whiskash, but the Whiskash is going to have to still pull off two charge moves in order to knock out this Feraligator. Feraligator easily lives a mud bomb here, and Whiskash doesn't live... This many Hydro Cannons, you're going to go down after the next Hydro Cannon, and for Alligator can simply just CMP on the next one here if they want to. And it looks like that's exactly what Baj does. Very nice counting. I think the opponent did go for an overfarm there. They're looking to shield most likely here and try to farm down. That would be my expectation. No, they just go for a slight overfarm, and now they're forced to throw this mud bomb, and for Alligator's all too happy to let this go. And because of the amount of damage that for Alligator did to the Skarmory, Altaria is no longer afraid of it. The opponent's going to go for the Scald here. Easy. No problem. Fine. Okay. They get the attack drop. That's unfortunate. But they don't. I wish I could get that lucky. The opponent's going to come back in with the Skarmory. And if they want to keep the Skarmory alive, they have to shield now this Altaria. And Skeleturge up a shield does very well into so many things. Going to come in. And the opponent's got Gligar in the back. They are running an ABA Flyer, ABB ground team. And this is just, this is just curtains. Do we call the Aerial Ace? No, he's going to go ahead and let the uh, get get the shield here, and that's fine. Going to be able to go for the Disarming Voice. The opponent basically has to shield this, because if they don't, they lose anyway, right? So Disarming Voice gets shielded, immediately goes for the Shadow Ball, because when you go up to 100 energy with Skeleturge, you can throw one and the other. You cannot throw two Shadow Balls, but you can throw the back-to-back -back, uh, two moves there. So good game, well played. Getting into the next battle here, we've got Altaria on the lead here versus a Gligar. This is not a bad matchup. Honestly, this is where I would prefer to see the Gligar because you force the Gligar to go for Aerial Aces rather than being able to go for the stronger digs because of that flying typing. Now, going for the uh, Sky Attack, the opponent over farming here, they're most likely going to shield this because this would do a significant amount of damage to the Gligar. They just let it go. Okay, that is great news for Skeleturge now as we let the move go here. Aerial Ace obviously don't need to shield this. The opponent going to go for another Aerial Ace before going down. Altaria could let this go. It's fine. And, and Baj is electing to agree here. Now we're going to have to see what the opponent might have in the back. They may, That was odd. They may have something in the back that is weak. They are weak in the back. They look like they are triple weak or at least double weak in the back to this Altaria. Gonna get a shield here and gonna come in with the Skeleturge. Up a shield. Skeleturge can land two Disarming Voices pretty cleanly here and not have much of a problem. Opponent going for four counters with about as good timing as they could right there. That would be ideal there. Icy Wind, really unfortunate, but the opponent kind of has to do it in order to make anything happen. So they're able to get three counters in. That means they are gonna be three away from the next move here. So that means they're gonna be able to get to another uh, Icy Wind before Baj is able to get to the next Disarming Voice. But this is fine now because they threw that icy wind they're throwing another they're throwing the scald here now you can over farm by quite a bit waits that one turn to see if the opponent wants to try and make a swap throwing that damage is, or throwing the move as late as possible a lantern 
Oh, goodness, not the Lantern. Gonna swap into the Feraligator. All Feraligator has to do here is get the opponent within Shadow Ball range. Now, why this is really interesting here is because we reset the debuff on the Skeleturge, but because the opponent needs eight sparks to get to the, uh, to the Thunderbolt to knock out here, that also means that that's going to mean that the uh, Hydro Cannon gets thrown because one Incinerate is about two and a half sparks plus the swap. That's three sparks. And then they would have CMP'd on the Thunderbolt to get the damage off and then Shadow Ball from Skeleturge. So very well played in that last game. Another Shadow Skarmory on the lead in this one. Not another Skarmory, the Shadow Skarmory. Going to see the immediate swap into the Feral Alligator. Does the opponent have anything against this? They do try to catch a move on the Whiskash, but now, unfortunately, Whiskash is about to catch these hands as the uh, Feral Alligator is going to launch two Hydro Cannons in immediate succession. We're going to force an early shield off this opponent here. Feral Alligator really messing up these uh, Skarmory Whiskash cores when the best thing that the opponent can swap in to Feraligator is a Whiskash? Trainer, that's not gonna go, that's not gonna fly. Now, Bosch could easily shield and get another Hydro Cannon off, and he looks to do so as he hopes the opponent may want to make a play for a switch, but shield advantage here is gonna be very nice, especially with Skeleturge, and you got the, you got the Whiskash out of the way. Clearly, they don't have a Lantern, otherwise they would have brought that in. Now, opponent Oh, they almost get to another move, but you could come in with Altari and soak this energy, no problem. They're not going to be able to do anything other than a Scald here. So this is good resisted damage. Altari acting like an absolute sponge. And then in comes the, the Skeleturge to get an immediate head start on energy. Very nice play here. And then the opponent comes in with their Gligar. This is just, this, this is just an Aerial Ace and Baj knows it. He's saving the shield to deal with the Skarmory, knowing that this is going to be less damage than the Brave Bird would be. Able to take out the Gligar here. Boom! And the opponent is sweating as their switch clock is absolutely here uh, 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 counting down, right? It's not up yet because they just swapped hard into the Gligar. The Whiskash is still back there, which means that Skeleturge is going to be able to get the Shadow Ball. He could have KO'd with a Disarming Voice, but let's go Shadow Ball. We're going to get another Kaboom here because we love Skeleturge. Boom! And then comes in with the Altaria to finish off the Whiskash. Very nicely done. Getting into the final match of the game here. We got Altaria against another Lickitung. This is where you got to see the Lickitung because it honestly has really good play against Feraligator and Skeleturge. Obviously double resisting the Shadow Claws from Feraligator and doing super effective with the Licks on the Skeleturge here. This is where we'd like to see the Lickitung to try and dispatch it. Now, it might be another situation for Baj to just reach into his hat and pull out the force once again and catch a body slam on the Skeleturge. That would be massive. Um, Boom Blast is going to come through. He's probably going to do it again because that's one thing that you'll notice about the players that have gotten to the point where they can re re you know, can um, over and over. I can't. Repeatedly. There's the word. They can repeatedly hit Legend. They tend to be consistent in the way that they play matchups out. You'll see a lot of the times, especially when I shoutcast players that are like, you know, playing leaderboards and whatnot. They'll often end up going for, um, you know, similar plays in the leads whenever they play them. Now, opponent comes in behind energy with a Skeleturge. They're going to have to bait twice in order to make any sort of leeway in this matchup. Coming with the Feraligator, baby! You shield back, but this opponent's not going to get to it. They just like... <laughs> Whatever they had in the back was going to get just... It might be the same team. It could be the Lickitung double fire. In which case, that 5-0 is massive. Baj taking a 10-0 streak straight to Legend. Congratulations once again, my dude. Very nicely played games here. Hopefully, you're going to be able to cr uh, crash up into Legend very shortly. Thank you all very much for watching. This was an exciting shoutcast. Being able to see some really high-level play here with the Altaria Skeleturge for Alligator. And I, told you, I tried this team. This team is absolutely real. It's solid. I like it. Um, I just got really bad luck when I played it, but... This team is the real sauce. So give it a try, trainers. Let me know in the comments how it goes for you. And thank you very much. We'll catch you in the next one. Bye-bye.